Hey Stitch family, it's Andrew here. Normally my community updates are on topics that I'm really excited to share with you. There's good news for the community, something, a uh, new feature that we've released, something's happening in one of our communities, uh, something amazing that one of our members has done. Unfortunately, this community update is not one of them. I've got some, um, some rather solemn news to share and also some really important safety information because uh, it's a bit of a reminder and a wake up call for everyone. So we would really like you to listen to the story and find out about it because last week we hit a milestone that I was hoping would never happen. Since we started Stitch in 2014, as you all know, if you're a Stitch member, we have a focus on safety for the community. We have our verification process. We do a lot of work behind the scenes to detect scammers uh, and people who are just behaving in ways that are not in the best interests of other members. But, but the particular focus is on scammers. We get uh, up to a dozen scammers try to sign up every day with fake profiles. And we have the verification process to protect members, but we also do a lot of other stuff uh, behind the scenes, looking at where they're coming from, IP addresses, there's a lot of technical technical uh, solutions to what scammers can do. But we also look at then how they behave in the, in the community and we give warnings. If you've seen, been a community member for a while, you've probably seen a warning uh, that uh, someone's sharing personal informa contact information with you and uh, you need to be careful, that sort of thing. Now, the, the total sum of all the stuff that we do has meant that ever since we started uh, in 2014, we have never had a instance of a member being scammed by a scammer, being scammed out of their own money or, or something like that. So, so it's something we've prided ourselves on. Uh, we didn't don't make a massive song and dance because we don't really want to attract uh, scammers who kind of think that might be a challenge. But but you know it's 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 the number one. It's the bedrock of the community. So I was a bit I was absolutely gutted last week when we got a voicemail message from someone who is a daughter of a member in Perth, Australia, saying on the voicemail message, it said that my mum has fallen victim to a scammer for someone that she met on Stitch, matters with the police, and uh, and not blaming Stitch at all, but just wanting to let us know so we could uh, take action if we needed to. And as you can imagine, this was, uh, it was one of the most devastating voicemails I've listened to in terms of uh, you know, we've had such an amazing track record uh, to have, to go from being able to say it's never happened to not being able to do that anymore was pretty big. So there's a bit to the story and, um, and I'd like everyone in the community to be aware of not just that something like this could happen. Um, there's some good news, by the way. It turns out that she wasn't, uh, wasn't scammed out of her own money, but there's still a warning there for everybody. So I'd like you to listen to the story and, and most importantly, particularly if you're a new member, um, and you've just joined the community or you haven't formed a, a very, very large network within the community of members you know and trust, just some recommendations for you to be aware of so that you can keep yourself safe and that you can help us keep the community safe for everyone. So would you like to hear the story? So yeah, a member in Perth uh, had been contacted via private messaging from one of our members in uh, in Melbourne, Australia. And um, the story as it was related to me, I was fortunate enough to get her daughter on, on the line to tell me what, what had happened so we can have a little bit more context. Because obviously every time something like this happens, we need to understand how so that we can see is there a way that we could protect, prevent it for the future. Uh, and this particular member um, in Melbourne didn't fit the profile of a, a normal scammer in the sense that uh, it was a real person, we had their name, address, uh, their face matched, their, everything about them uh, showed us that this person actually really was in, in Melbourne, as opposed to what often happens with scammers, they're impersonating someone from a different location. And uh, they struck up a conversation and fairly early on in that, in that conversation, um, the scammer had asked her, had shared his phone number um, with the woman. At that point, they stopped communicating on Stitch. Right? Now, the member in question got warnings from us about this, um, which, as you know, we, we do that and we send them some links to the guidelines and ask them to report us if anything suspicious happens. And unfortunately, that didn't happen. She did provide a negative rating for him initially, which was great, but later on, she then took that down uh, because she, she decided she was going to trust him, uh, which was really disappointing because if she kept it up there, we, all we needed was a, a couple of other reports from other people and we would have detected him uh, much more quickly. But um, 
but I'll come back to that. So the um, the story then went that she started having Skype conversations with this guy uh, every night. And now normally scammers don't like to be on Skype because they're actually, the, the profile picture is, doesn't match who they are. In this case, it's a little bit unusual. It really was this, this person. They're having Skype conversations every night. The guy's telling him he's beautiful. Um, and the, the family was a little bit concerned because it's unusual just how suddenly she was, um, she was you know, in rapture with this, with this fellow. By the way, she was a limited member of the community, uh, not a full member, but it doesn't matter. We like to protect everybody. We strive to. Uh, but she was on the phone with him every, every day. And, uh, and then at one point she reveals, after only about three weeks, to her daughter that uh, she's actually, they're, they're planning on getting married. A uh, little bit of a red flag uh, to be planning something like that with someone that you have never met in person uh, and you've only known for three weeks, but the family was like, okay, mum, what's going on? But then pretty shortly thereafter, she the, the, the real penny dropped when she said, look, he had revealed he was having some difficulty transferring some money uh, overseas and needed uh, my help. And at this time, and so I helped transfer some money overseas and the daughter said it was to a, a reputable money transfer um, site and uh, and so on. So at this point, I was just absolutely appalled because I thought um, the member in question had, had lost her money. Uh, and we're wondering what could we do to help her out and work with the police. Uh, the daughter said, oh, look, I'm, I'm not gonna tell you how much it is, but it was a significant amount of money. money. Um, and, uh, and I said, look, it was, you don't need to tell me how much, but do you mean by significant? Do you mean more than $10,000? She said, yes. So my heart really sank at that point. More than $20,000? Yes, it was more than $20,000. So it was a significant amount of money. Um, and I was at that point at the, the lowest <laughs> part of the conversation. But then the daughter said, and this is the only good news in the whole story, uh, but it wasn't her money. It was actually, he had got her help to transfer some money from his account overseas. Now, typically when a scammer does this, and you know, we work with cybersecurity experts and, and we look at what happens in on other websites to, to see how the, what a scammers normally do. Normally, if that something like this happens, it's for one of two reasons. One is uh, the scammer is trying to build trust. So getting you to make little transgressions or do things that maybe aren't going to set off some red uh, flags for you and then you get normalized to do that and then they can ask you something else and you get normalized to that so then finally they ask you for, for money you become so trusting because you know you've transferred their money around the world and you've done all this sort of stuff so they, they're buying trust so definitely hoping that's that's the former category the other reason that scammers can get you to do something like that is one version of a scam isn't to get your money is to get you involved in some sort of illegal activity um, you know, there are cases of um, victims who've been asked to carry goods to, you know, they're visiting to see the scammer's family and please take uh, this this bottle of wine to my mum, but actually inside the bottle is, you know, some drugs or something or other. So there's definitely been cases where victims have gone to jail because they've been, they've fallen victim to a scam. So those are the two things that worried about. The great news is got onto it very early. Uh, and because we do have this track record, we, we stitch and we can actually show the, the, the details, we can work with the police and so on. So devastating story, very upsetting for the family, um, upsetting for us. However, the good news is we still haven't had a case where a, a member's been scanned out of money that we know of from stitch. However, it really highlighted that we need to do more to raise awareness. Like stitch sends you these warnings about uh, contacting, uh, about you know communicating with people off the platform um, because the, the reason scammers do that is that there's no oversight. If they're just um, on a phone call with you or on Skype, no one is able to, to check that. On Stitch, of course, we, we, we do a lot of stuff. And if, if more people were connected to this person only on Stitch, then it would be much safer. Obviously, anytime this happens, we then reach out to anyone that the person has contacted uh, to let them know, and, and, uh, and we've done that in this case. But the message for all of you is it's twofold. Number one, when you see those warnings, please bear them in mind. Now, there are plenty of cases where it is, it's valid for you to be getting the contact details from some of the community. We're a community. You meet people in person all the time. So if you meet someone in person at an event or activity, you're free to exchange phone numbers. And if you've met them on Stitch, that's, that's totally fine. If they're an organizer, you haven't met them yet, but you're going to their event, you might, the organizer might want to share their contact details so you can call them if you get you can't find everyone you don't know people so there's plenty of scenarios that are actually quite valid 
And uh, and you know, it's it's you don't need to be freaking out about uh, what's going on here because it makes sense. But for someone, if, if you're new to the community or the person you're talking to doesn't have a big network, they haven't been involved in person, it's particularly the in-person stuff, uh, or you know, actually you might meet people on a, on a virtual event, that's fine too. But once, um, once you, uh, if you're connecting with someone and, it's, and you really don't know them, we want you, and this video is forming part of this, we want you to be careful. You should not be doing a lot of communication with someone until you really trust them and you know you can trust them. So that's that's one thing, raising awareness. Please, if you've watched this video, and, and share it with other people too, you, you need, we need to keep the community safe because obviously there's plenty of people who are vulnerable who might join and it's all of our responsibility to try to help spread the word and raise awareness of staying safe. So we're gonna be increasing the messaging we do, uh, really making it um, obvious that you, you have to be careful However, we can't protect people from their own mistakes. If you choose to ignore it, then you know there's, there's a limit to what we can do. But there is something else you can do. And that is, you're all probably familiar with, if you're, in a, if you're connected with someone and you're chatting on Stitch, Stitch will prompt you and ask you to rate that person about um, whether it's been good or bad or, or suspicious or, or so on. And we use that data to a great degree to help us pick up people who are behaving in ways that don't match the profile of a normal Stitch member. So every time you, you give a good rating to someone, that's actually helping protect us because it means when 99% of the people get these positive ratings and we see them behave a certain way, the ones who don't stick out like a sore thumb. So every time you feel confident that you can give a rating for someone, please, please do so. If someone's you know given you their phone number or details or asked for it and it doesn't fit these criteria that we're looking for, that there's a reason, it's, a, it's a, a reasonable excuse for them to be able to share, like they're an organizer or you know, they're one of our trusted members of the community, they're trying to welcome you, or if there's no real reason and they're just trying to send you a, hey beautiful, I, I, think, you're, I think you're gorgeous and wouldn't you like to talk, we'd like you to flag that and just say, yep, this is something that I'm maybe I'm a bit worried about. You don't, you're not really reporting them, you're not, you're not actually, um, your vote alone isn't going to get us to boot them off Stitch because sometimes you know people do this and it's quite valid. But it only takes a few of you giving a low rating for it to be flagged by the system for us to be able to investigate and start to to make sure that um, the person in question is is kind of shielded or shield the community from the person in question uh, until we have a higher confidence that they can be trusted. So it's a wake up call for everyone. Please, please, please bear those two things in mind. Number one, pay attention to the warnings that Stitch gives you. Um, you know, we're going to be even more forceful with the warnings, but, uh, but you know, there's only so much we can do. Be very aware that this, this sort of behavior can happen. Um, these anti-scammer stuff we have in place doesn't protect us necessarily if we validate, in this case, we validated the person was real. Uh, and actually what they've done may not even be a crime at this point. So the police will only be able to step in if there actually is fraud. And it seems like we've actually stopped that in, in place before it even happened. But we don't want it to happen. We don't want it to be, a, well, we don't want there ever to be a first time. So please, please, please pay attention to the warnings. And the other one, of course, just a reminder, click on that rating. Give us, give us your feedback, whether it's good, give us a good rating or bad or just worrying. Everything helps. Every data point that we have across the whole community helps us form a picture of who is a normal Stitch member and who that, that half a percent who might be a little bit troublesome, even less than half a percent. As I said, there's one one incident since 2014, but one is too many. If you just do the, those two things, the community is going to stay the safe and wonderful place it's always been. Uh, you're part of that solution, as is everyone else in the community, which is what makes it great. So thanks for listening. Thanks for being a great member. Look after yourself and bye for now.